Welcome to Ultrasound Games, where we've been reviewing the white paper of Alluvium, and we're in the third part of it. So if you want to get up to speed with the, the original, the, the first, then go to our other, other two videos. Um, with this video, we'll be going through mining and harvesting, shards, weapons, armor, and imbues. So if that interests you, then keep watching. Uh, to my, on the screen left, is Josh. How you going, mate? Hey, how's it going? doing good that's good and i'm brad and um and yeah so we've we've had a really exciting week where we we dropped our first video and and we've been just unbelievably impressed with um we've got like 50 subscribers now which like to be honest was like way faster than we expected and yeah we're just we've just been like just pumping out daily alluvium vids and you guys seem to be liking it so we just first of all just want to just thank you so much um josh and i just really we we didn't expect to be able to do this so so far so it's um it's uh it's really fun so we're really looking forward to the to bringing this to you um yeah josh was there anything that you wanted to yeah the community has been great we really appreciate the support and um the more support we have the more we'll keep going yeah and I guess with that said, just quickly, um, we're on podcast, so uh, just check the links in the YouTube description uh, if you if you just want to listen to this. Uh, we're on YouTube, and we've got an Instagram that we're still trying to figure out. So, but anyway, just we're mainly just on on um, on YouTube, Twitter podcast and discord so if you want to reach us out there we are just we love chatting with anyone that comes around and chats to us so yeah uh with that being said um let's kick into it so mining and harvesting so i guess i guess again i'll just i'll just preface this we've gone through the last thing that we went through was uh like adventuring the battle arena alluvia decks for the for alluvium um for anyone that is just listening for the first time alluvium is an open world rpg that has uh pokemon like catching and part like part, like team making elements but the battling is a bit different it's it's similar to a game called team fight tactics which is just uh which is an auto chess type game uh, just basically they auto fight and it's about you sort of just making sure that they they synergize together which we talked about in 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 the in the last two episodes um so right now we're talking about mining and harvesting and and so yeah let's get into it your subordinate drone isn't just a good looking gadget in addition to storage and assistance during battle, your PSD is also capable of mining minerals from the planet's surface and forging them into useful items. The landscape is speckled with deposits that one that contain ore, uncured shards, uncured shards, and rare gemstones. After harvesting these, use your drone to forge them into weapons and suits of armor by infusing the materials with energy. Some materials are much more rare and provide stronger bonuses to your equipment. Wield these yourself for an advantage in combat or sell them on the Alluvia decks. Alluvium is also littered with trees that produce various alien fruits and pulsate with energy. Harvest these to create enhancements for your alluvials in battle or to nurse them back to health without heading back to the Sanctum Mesa. Which I guess I don't know what the sanctum messer like messer is, but I'm assuming that that's sort of like your hub where you might be able to go and heal your alluvials and whatnot. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of information here that I haven't even um, heard of yet <laughs> with all the stuff that we're, I've been looking at. Um, I suspect any- once once the game um, comes out, they would probably come out with another manual per se oh, like yes i something that it kind of explains all these things yeah i really expect it um the the whole plants thing actually got me quite interested because we've we've been hearing about how yeah of course you we're gonna we're gonna find the alluvials and 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 we've heard a lot about mining and mining for shards and I guess what we've been really focused on is the the uncured shards part of it, but be, but they're saying that there's going to be ore and rare gemstones, and um and then and they're literally talking about how to forge weapons and suits of armor. I I, I got to keep getting my head wrapped around the fact that we ourselves as an as a as a as the pro- main protagonist is going to be. Uh, 
be fighting with, with our with our creatures. Um, I saw a really funny meme actually. It was in a YouTube short that like one of the Alluvium YouTubers um, created, and it was so it was so funny because it was it was it was watching it was the it was the the gameplay of the of of the Alluvium and the, uh, the what should we call the protagonist? Like, is there a name for her? Is it uh, is it only is it always a her? I'm I'm because I've only seen a, a, a um woman. there is a name for her. Well, Let me see regardless of who she is, while you're talking, they're fighting together, and and then at the end, there's a clip of this like <laughs> this parody of Pokemon where Ash is like this is this big fat dude, and and and, and Pikachu is is like. <gasps> You like he's he's like we never hurt Pokemon. Like Ash says, we never hurt Pokemon. He says, you don't hurt Pokemon. You make us hurt Pokemon. And it's like it is this real dynamic that Pokemon sort of never addresses. Where yeah, you're constantly getting Pokemon to fight your battles, and I really love the twist of making it so that the protagonist, you yourself, actually have will will level up your own person as well as your armor and your weapon um really fun like it's it's um it's something that i really appreciate because i don't think i see many games like that where the the actual avatar your your main person is actually leveled up uh, did you find the name that's all i'm still working on pulling it up that's all right um oh, i'm i'm looking for a picture of some of the the plants. There was a really cool one that I saw. Arlen. I found it. I believe it's it's Arlen. Okay. Arlen. A R L E N. Awesome. Arlen. All right. Well, I look I look forward to playing her. So yeah, look at these. Look at these plants. Oh man, I love their drawings. It's so cool. So these are. I, you know, I, I assume there's going to be others, though, besides Arlen, because if you look at the picture, so there's a picture where it's it looks like maybe the planes um, in the world of Alluvium, and, and it looks like a male. Okay. So I assume there's going to be multiple different types of main characters. Okay. Big. I'm just showing right now, just the different type the art. Of, dif yeah, different type of plants. There was a there was a cool one, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to find it. It's about a, it's about the, like these bananas. Like they're talking about these bananas. I don't know, man. These guys have so many. Oh, actually, is it this one? No, I don't think so. But look, these are going to be the plants that we're going to be able to. F oh wow! Look at this is this is the person right here, right? <laughs> and this is how big these plants are. <laughs> have you noticed no. when you when you when you look at when you look at the like ha, have you looked at a bunch of the leaks and the videos that have come out? I have actually. Have you noticed the sense of scale that they've been really providing with these? that you as a person are quite small, like in the map and relative to the things around you, which I really wasn't expecting. I was expecting just to, like when they talk about seven biomes that we are gonna interact with, I really didn't expect these biomes to be very big. I just have such low expectations because we're talking about crypto games, but then sure. it, it seems like these guys may be really trying to pull off something that is really cool, like really, proper and good and the, and i think from the from the footage that i've been seeing it actually looks like the scale like you it's going the, the biomes are going to be big actually they're I'll pull, huge i'll pull up a map right now that they've they've created um these type of maps and i guess you can't really see uh the but if like 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 even like for this one right they're saying this is one this is uh, two, three, four, like uh, for like these areas, I could imagine like, like this is actually going to be quite big. Like I, I, it's not, it's hard to sort of judge scale with this, but I'm, I, it's, uh, 
I'm really, really intrigued of whether they really going to justify the, the scale of all of this. So um, I don't know if you can pull it up for them, but I just sent you a picture um, which shows up to kind of the size difference. Oh, let me see. Okay. I guess this is like concept art. So here it is. Um, <laughs> dude, if, if this is what the areas look like. <laughs> you may man. have to move. Uh, so I think you're... Uh, your video square is probably in the way oh, of the, way the, of the person. person. All right, let me move it. There's the person. That's yeah, how so crazy cool. would that be? <laughs> that is really cool. Man, this is beautiful. Dang. Wow. <laughs> they, they, they have some great con concept artists. Like, it really j pumps me up. Um, and I guess comparing this where back here, so like imagine if this area was literally just area one, <laughs> like, like, I don't know. Like I really, like that seems like what that would have been, be. like it, it, so there's, this is like, and if that's the case, then this is a big map. This is a real big map. Wow. Well, we've sort of deviated. Uh, but yeah, from the mining and harvesting, was there anything that really stood out to you? Um, so uh, thinking about it, I mean, it kind of gives me the feeling that it's similar. The concept is a little bit similar to the old school command and conquer games where you used to send your dump trucks out and you would collect ore and then use that ore to purchase multiple different buildings and and make your vehicles and, and attack. Obviously, this is a little more advanced. Um, but the cool thing is, is as you produce these things, um, my assumption is, is that some of these things would actually be minted as NFTs, especially since it says you can sell it in the decks. Yeah, that's um, right. So it's pretty fascinating because not only is it valuable in the game, but... Again, it goes back to the entire game bringing the uh, the player, the end user, value in multiple different ways. Yeah, I Not really just think entertainment. Yeah, something that I've been speaking about in previous videos that I've been creating is this this idea that I think that there's, there's going to be people that really want to just be adventurers and not necessarily be a, a battling tournament person that and i really hope that they cater to that and it seems like they will i think it seems like yes the esports thing is going to be strong but i think that to really provide the economy that they, that that the tournaments need they need to have a really strong base of just players that love the world that love interacting with the world and yes they will battle when they're going to go catch alluvial alluvials but maybe most of the time they really like adventuring i wonder how curious would this be is if they just barely interact with alluvials if, if you could play the game that way but you could but you're just mining that's just what you do you, you go explore out the you world. Just explore <laughs> the world and you mine like that's how you justify you, you know your time and value is that you explore you get minerals you get gemstones you get shards and that's what you do you become a crafter you, you a swordsmith you know yeah, really i mean you almost could like create little jobs within the game dude i 100 I percent believe that that is where this well, like people will think like that, even if the game doesn't facilitate that exact type of like, I know in, in RuneScape or something like that, you can really like dial in your job of how you contribute to the world. Uh, like some MMOs are really like that where you're like, yes, I'm going to even wow, right? Like you really dive into being uh, someone that crafts a particular type of thing. Like I think you could even, when it came even to armor, you could focus on being able to develop cloth armor over metal armor and it's just like so but 
regardless of whether they are actual game mechanics, because there is real monetary value to these things, people will make a job out of these things. And But what I would hope is that people don't just do the grind because just because there's money in it, or at least if they do the grind just because there's money in it, it's still fun to do the things, to explore and to know where to potentially find like the, the materials and, and, and we're going to have jet, uh, like jet packs <laughs> to be able to explore across these, like these different areas. Uh, there, there was a, there was a certain, oh, I need to find it. Uh, it's not something I could just find right now, but they did show notes of how, like you'll be able to, or how they want you to be able to like, um, move from from island to island it showed all the different areas of how they were like yes we want you to like the way that you get to this area is only through the jetpack and so there's going to be rarer things there so people are going to definitely like double down on on what they on on what they want to achieve in the game and some of the people yeah will make jobs out of uh, out of these even if they're little jobs I'm not sure how much we really don't know how much money this is all going to provide for people but yeah people will literally dial down and be an armor smith of sorts <laughs> within the game <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. or a shard cure <laughs> yeah you, you sort of you, yeah well 100% there's just going to be people that go that's what I do that's how I'm going to make some months and that's how it's going to provide for me to just keep playing the game and and some are going to be collectors and some are not and I just I'm like oh man that's so cool uh, you said like you know would would all of these things be NFTs I have a feeling that they may not be but so it says some of the, um, some materials are much more rare and provide stronger bonuses to your equipment will these yourself for an advantage in combat or sell them on the Louvre deck so I feel like the way that they reference that and again they're they're leaving a lot out here so it's there's a lot to interpretation but I feel like they are saying that these ingredients may not necessarily be NFTs, but you'll be able to turn them into NFTs. So like, um, I, I reckon to keep the blockchain usage down, cause there has to be some sort of cost to immutable to do. You can't just run like every single action and interaction on the blockchain. So I feel like the, the difference between, um, uncured shards and cured shards are that unco- like cured shards are NFTs and uh, so I don't know what do you think about that yeah no I mean I, I think to a certain extent I mean yeah of course not everything I suppose can be an NFT um, but you fuse them together to make one or make one stronger yep All right, sick. This, the mining and harvesting is going to be a massive part of this game. Like this is where so much of the game hinges on it because you can't catch alluvials without shards. And I guess speaking of that, let's talk about shards. So shards. Shards are probably the most important item in the game. It is only with these shards that players are able to capture alluvials that they best in combat. As such, each player will want to be st- Um, stocked with a few before venturing into the world. You can mine them from deposits, but you'll always want to make sure you have something available in case you encounter a rare alluvial. Like most elements in the game, shards come in a variety of tiers based on their power at capturing alluvials. The stronger the alluvial, the (coughs) harder... Excuse me. The stronger the alluvial, the harder they are to capture. This is where a strong shard is most effective. The quality of the shard you pull from the ground is random, the most powerful ones being the rarest. If you want to make sure that you can capture everything you find in the world, then it's worth checking out the Alluvidex where you can acquire shards. Very cool. So first thoughts and questions on that um, is I wonder. So when you pull them out of the ground, I was wondering whether or not you can actually, is there going to be a mechanism to make those shards, um, I guess, level up their, their tiers? Because on that last sentence, it says, 
if you want to make sure that you can capture everything you find in the world, then it is worth checking out the Aluva decks where you can acquire shards. So I, I assume you're we're acquiring shards that people are selling who have already obtained them from the world. But is there a way if I pull up like some kind of a common shard, can I fuse it with anything to make it a better one? Yeah, so this is interesting because I guess like in Pokemon for like for the sake of example they have the pokeball they have then the great ball they have the ultra ball and and then they have a bunch of balls in between that that do unique things depending on the attribute of the pokemon so they might be better against water or something like that whereas from what we know from listening and just from reading this there's so much missing <laughs> like we're missing so much information about shards I, the, the general knowledge, and I can't speak to this, like any, anything beyond this with like, with certainty, but what I can speak with certainty is that there are tier one to five shards. Well, sorry, there's zero as well, the free version. I am curious though, that within tier one, if you can't have a better, like a more common tier one and a more rare tier one, is that sort of what you're asking? Yeah. So, I mean, when you go in and you find a shard and it's a common shard or or a tier one or a lower tier, is there a way to level it up to a higher tier or do I just have to find one or buy one from the decks? I think for, we don't know that. Right. Well, what, yeah. So what we do know is, yeah, that the that you at the very least can buy them, but the way that anyone will even find them and make them it is that they go to the tier two area. So if you wanted, I, I think from all we know, if we want, if you wanted to like have a higher chance of capturing a tier one, like tier one alluvial, because I guess with with this being said. T1 shards, from what I understand, I, I now that I talk about it, I think that there will have to be uh, a spectrum of different shard levels within each tier, but we don't know that. So, but what we do know is that you can throw a T1 shard at a T1 alluvial, and it's not a hundred percent guaranteed catch. Like okay. that's the impression I'm getting. But if you want a higher chance, then you can use a T2 shard to capture a tier one and you'll have a much higher chance. And that's the same with if you went tier three to catch a tier one, because it was just like, honestly, if either of us approached a shiny holographic tier one, dude, I'm throwing the highest level shard <laughs> that I have at that thing. <laughs> um, For sure. Like I'm, I'm going to spend the mon the money just to do it. <laughs> uh, Cause yeah, I just, it, 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 you go. So I was going to say, in like I said before, I have zero experience with Pokemon. But when when do you choose which ball or shard you would use? So like before I I go into you know a battle, am I choosing the shard right there from the get go, or do I got to knock them out first? Then it gives me the option to select what shard i want to use yeah so um, the way the way that pokemon you should play some pokemon before you you start this game <laughs> <laughs> um i uh, yeah the way that pokemon works is that let's say that at the beginning area you've got level five pokemon around you you go and encounter a level one pokemon and then that pokemon is you you don't actually knock them out you get them to a point where they have a tiny a, a, you, you could throw you could throw a pokeball at them at any point but the stronger that they are in health the stronger they oh, are to, to, to break out so then you want to bring, bring them down. And this is this risk thing. You want to damage them to the point where they're almost dead, but not. But if you kill them, you can't catch them. Well, you don't <laughs> kill them, they faint. Um, but in Alluvium, if they faint, that's when you can catch them. So you actually do defeat them and then you catch them. Uh, but then in terms of choosing in Pokemon, 
it's like the higher the level, the stronger they are. But you could catch, like you can throw any Pokeball at at a hundred a level hundred Pokemon. That's like the max level. And yes, you could throw the lowest, like just just a plain Pokeball at it. And even though it may have one HP, it most likely will not catch it. Like it's just that type of. But I think there is still a chance it could. It's not impossible. It's just very low. So they've got this sliding scale depending on health and depending on level. This Pokeball may be able to catch it. And so for Alluvium, it's like you definitely cannot use from what I understand. Oh, look, actually, I could be totally wrong with this. I have a feeling that you cannot use a tier one on a tier, a tier one shard on a tier two Alluvial. Because, and I guess I'm basing that on the fact that that Kieran has said you can't catch a tier one alluvial with a tier zero shard. But maybe that's an exclusive rule to the tier zero to make sure that freebie things like free tier, like the, the free tier, tier zero, can't just catch actual valuable things. Um, yeah. Possibly. 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 Yeah, and time will tell. Time will tell. That's with a lot of these things. I can't. I really want them to bring out some more detailed paperwork. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I want a. I want a game manual. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um. All right. So, ready to move on to weapons? Yes. Heck yeah. All right. Weapons. In Alluvium, it is not just the Alluvials that fight. You as a player character get to fight in battle, wielding futuristic weapons that can be equipped with gemstones that store the essence of Alluvials, allowing you to emit an aura that boosts your Alluvials in combat. Your choice of weapons also determine your class, which gives additional benefits to your team. Weapons can be sold on the Alluvia decks like most NFTs in the game. There's going to be so in it, so many NFTs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. The thing that actually stood out the most to me is your choice of weapons also determines your class. Mm-hmm. And and so the alluvials will have their own predetermined class that you'll be building your team around and they'll have a set class. But then you as as the the I, I want to call them the trainer because that's what it is in Pokemon, but I don't I, I don't know as the master of these alluvials, will actually we can change our class around to benefit the team, because as in team fight tactics, when 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 classes and synergies all synergize and 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 everyone has similar traits, everyone gets buffs within that trait. So it's cool that you can sort of like, uh, all right, this team, I'm going to, I'm going to use this team and then I'm going to use this weapon to, to benefit this type of team. But then you can change your class. It's cool. It is very cool. <laughs> There's some uh, weapon concept art too that they released. All right, I just sent that to you too. All right, it's coming. There we go. Look at that sword. Well, I guess we've got... <laughs> no, I assume, got I assume those sword. are for the main character. Yes, yes. And I guess that we, that's, we, we don't know whether we can give... I, I know that we'll be able to give items... Like I'm sure like team fight tactics is so much about the items. So I, I, I'm sure that items will be for your alluvials. I don't think we'll be giving them swords though, <laughs> but who knows? No, like, no, no, no. <laughs> um, but maybe like, but these are definitely for your character. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's move on to armor then. So, Armor, also forged from items mined on Alluvium. Armor is your defense against the beasts that you fight. If your armor becomes too damaged, you may need to wait until it regenerates. However, your choice of armor can sway the battle, as each suit has different properties. Choosing the right one for you and your team is one of the many decisions you will make in the game. Armor can be sold on the Alluvia decks like most other NFTs in the game. 
as usual. <laughs> I mean, I'm interested in whether really there's cool. any NFTs you can't sell. That like, I, that sort of makes me question whether there's like most other. I have like, well, are there NFTs you can't sell? <laughs> like, because what's the point? <laughs> like, of it being an NFT. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that just might be worded wrong. Hmm. So okay, if your armor becomes too damaged, you may need to wait until it regenerates. So is this going to, is, is your armor going to be different than your HP? Like, do you have a personal health point? Yeah, so that's a good question. I don't know. Maybe they just go by armor. Because I imagine in order to play, you have to have, you can't just go play. I would think you can't just go play with a bunch of creatures. You got to have someone leading those creatures, your hunter or what? Yeah, um, are we a hunter? I don't know what we are, but yeah. It, well, so I remember in the beginning of the story, it said you become a hunter and kind of travel out into the world to oh, find right. things. Um, so for now, we'll just call it a hunter. <laughs> okay. But regardless, uh, maybe, yeah. So, I mean, maybe, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they can be knocked out too. So maybe there is power for them as well as your armor. Um, or maybe once your armor's damaged, that just renders you unable to fight. Yeah. So I've, I've created a, I've brought up the, this is some, um, UI leaks and mm -hmm. I, oh, these are literally the same icon from team fight tactics. There's like 72 gold coins. I'm pretty sure that's like exactly the same. <laughs> Oh, That's maybe. Cool. Oh, maybe not. Actually, maybe I'm just noticing them. They're similar to these. Maybe I'm wrong. But we're looking here, and I can't see health anywhere. I'm gonna drag in and show you where there are some health, but I don't know where that's positioned. And we all obviously don't know. The okay. So this is interesting. Yeah. So allies. So, so, okay, th this is saying allies, like this is for the allies. And there's a, oh, man, there's so much that, like, um, uh, the blue would be mana. But then, what, oh, look at that. The purple can be gone halfway, mm -hmm. so the purple changes. So maybe that's for your ultimate or something. Maybe there's, like, an ultimate because that, that looks real cool and glowy when it's full. So that's probably an ultimate. Um, but then like, this yeah, is interesting. interesting. There's there's white and there's red and then there's green. And then there's complete red with green and white. What are all these things? Yeah, I don't know. So we don't really know. Like, this also makes me wonder, are these all the allies that are currently on the field? So are we get? Like, do we know how many we can have on the field? I don't think I've crossed that anywhere. Hmm. And if I did, I do not recall. <laughs> um, all right, one more UI thing. Maybe this will help us. Nope, I don't think this will help us. Squeaky Puff, level thirteen. So that's the that's the person's level. I wonder what these three things are. Unsure. These are your. I'm assuming these are classes or uh, uh, what? Are, what are they called? Um, affinities. Yep. So. Yes, yeah, sweet. These guys are buffed out on on dreadnought. All right. Well. Yeah, this is the whole armor thing is really just it's a it's a little bit different. The fact that like it will regenerate. So this is one of those things that you need to wait or you need to heal yourself. But then it's not your health. Well, we don't know whether your armor is your health. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Well, what? is there anything you want to say or? No, I think we covered all that. Okay. Well, I think then it's going to be, I, it will. So, I mean, in like armor, I would think maybe even weapon. I wonder if weapons can be damaged as well. Hmm. Well, they didn't say that. 
I, re- I actually really, I really hope not. I do too, because I don't like games where your weapons get damaged and you can't use them anymore. It make it too complicated though, as well for mm-hmm. like NFT like trading. Like, do you when you trade, are they low health? Like, are they damage weapons or, yeah. I think I I don't think so. The armor like that's already an interesting mechanic for an NFT to have. Uh, yeah. Like I'm everything curious, subject to change though. Like I wonder if you and me, if I could send you my armor and now it's full health, and you send me your armor and it's full health, and we could just swap <laughs> because no the way. game the game. Yeah. But but then what that requires is that the game remembers that that particular NFT has this amount of health and it's regenerating within the servers. Like it's like, I like it would have to be within servers, not within the local machine. So I think there's two ways to do that. So either. Yeah. So because it's an NFT, it has a specific, um, like metadata, I guess it'd be contract or yeah, the metadata. Um, and it would remember that based on that code or, you just can't swap it unless it's fully yeah repaired yeah no nah, like like if they if they try like if they create a con like if they, if there's like an, a contract for <laughs> the armor nft that's like unique to each player like that'd be that'd be pretty intense like coding <laughs> i think metadata was the maybe a more better. appropriate term but even then like me- but even <laughs> metadata it still needs to be hosted somewhere and so they're they're going to take the 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 hosting burden of that nft to constantly be checked like updating each of these armors of how they regenerate like that's just an interesting thing they're gonna have to work out because that like yeah because it's like it's it's easy to keep that local on your machine of like okay well this this armor with this nft like this armor that which is an nft has this amount of health and it's like sweet like my my local my, the machine running the game dictates and remembers that in a save file of some sort and within the game but then as soon as i send it out and i like i'm interested how that information follows it if it does and a really simple way like you said is that you just simply can't sell armor that's damaged that'd be a very simple right. way yeah all right well then with imbues imbues are cosmetic changes that can add value to a player's collection by further differentiating their acquisitions from others imbues are modular in nature and can be applied to multiple items or you may decide to sell them on the Illuvidex. various items in the game can be imbued such as weapons armor and even your drone so nice wait, what, so what do you think wait so what do you think i think this is, is- this is similar to skins. It's got to be just okay. customizations of straight cosmetic features, making your guy look cooler, you know, making your weapons look cooler, whatever in other games like Call of Duty. You know, you can you can purchase things to make your your guy and your your weapons appear much cooler. I guess so that if I have a really cool weapon already, that's gonna look cool. So then, is the imbue? But if everybody like, has that same exact weapon, it doesn't it look becomes different. less less cool. <laughs> yeah, I I I get that. But then, like with skins, skins are like they're 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 fake, right? So if you if you use a skin of a weapon it's making it look like you have a certain weapon that looks really cool, but it's, but you're, you know, you don't have that like that, but, but then like, so let's say I have a sword, right? But then the the imbue, does that replace the, like, does that make like, but does the imbue potentially make that sword look like an ax just for the sake of cosmetics? No, so I think that changes the entire weapon itself. I would say, well, maybe the handle um, has some snake wrapped around it. Or that's a lot of art. Like, 
Like, I'm oh not, yeah, no, it is. Unless, or maybe it's the colors and in the color patterns. Um, see, see, that, they, that, they, that, add, they can do that. They could add some like, like I, I'm just thinking from a technical standpoint, like how how they would go about that because that would like it'd be very intensive to to have like very like because it depends like it scales with every single new weapon they have but i guess if an imbue is f- is just for a certain type of weapon so let's say there is a sh- like there's a short sword well this is the imbue for a short sword then yes but i i, I don't know i i guess i read this of being like 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 imbue this is what they said imbues are modular in nature and can be applied to multiple items i guess i heard that as one imbue could be applied to multiple items so then this one imbue could set a theme for your armor for your weapon for your like for for everything for your drone well it makes you wonder if it maybe it's similar to like uh going back to the call of duty example um camouflages for weapons yes so, like, so there's just certain get, like, parts different... of there's certain parts of the weapon that change right. and and it's fairly um yeah it's fairly just In... te- texture and color and and those things can be sort of interchangeable right. yeah it's not like they're fully changing the model like the whole 3d mm. models changes like um, right. maybe it's maybe more 2d appearance i guess that, okay, okay now that i'm you, that's a good example because there are some weapons in cod where like they you have the base weapon right and the base weapon right. pretty much never changes but then they have certain aspects of it that you can customize and change the color and uh, add stickers to or whatever but right. some of them i think you can actually like it does add extra things to it to make it look like it's covered in something um like extra 3d models to it so i guess they, they can totally do that with these imbues i'm just like when they said that it can be applied to multiple items i'm like okay that makes sense if it's just like a color thing and and so you can just change the the color of your whole set to this like one imbue uh but but maybe they're also just saying that imbues can just be used on multiple items if you have multiple imbues. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and I think that, that that gives them more flexibility in what they're going to make for the game. So, you know, maybe initially they come out and they only have 10 to 15 different imbues, but over time as more seasons and more, um, you know, expansions come out, uh, they continue to create imbues and mm. they just kind of come out every time somebody creates one yeah i mean there's multiple ways they can do it but it does give them a lot of flexibility in what exciting things they can bring out for this game yes well i think skins are gonna be like just like just like Fortnite and all of these other games, God, whatever, skins are powerful. Cosmetics are powerful. And I they're going to be unbelievably more powerful with the blockchain, with NFTs. Like, it's... So, yes, I think imbues, as much as it only has one little paragraph explaining it, I think they're going to be a tremendous, <laughs> tremendous part of the ecosystem. I agree. I... I'm curious, and I don't know if... Have you ever played a game? Oh, I guess you played Warzone. Like, have you ever Mm -hmm. interacted and bought a Battle Pass before? No. So, I actually am kind of a new Warzone player. So, I just started not even a month ago. So, I haven't actually gotten into the Battle Passes. But I can can definitely see all the stuff that it allows you to unlock, which is very cool. Yes. So I guess anyone that does not know what battle passes are, because I honestly am so bullish on them. I think that they add a lot of value to a game. So battle passes are, uh, and in Fortnite's case, it was uh, like you would pay like a little fee and you'd enter into this this thing called a battle pass. And 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 what would happen is that there were uh, let's say a hundred 
rewards that you could get. And as you play the game, you're leveling up, you're getting experience and you're leveling up, obviously not just your person, not just your alluvials, but you're leveling up. Oh, sorry. I guess I'm talking about alluvium now, but like, and I'm imagining what it would be look like in alluvium, but you'd be leveling up your battle pass. And every time that you go up to the next tier of battle pass, and now you're in the level three part of the battle pass, you get the level three item. It just gets given to you. And, 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 but at the level 100, you've got like the best, skin it's really exciting like the, the when you start like it makes you want to just keep coming and playing the game because yes in game there's these fun things that you're trying to interact with and you keep doing but it's this another level of like oh and the battle passes are timed so and they're exclusive like they happen and then they're gone and so the items there do not come back into circulation they are up for a month or two and then they're gone so if you do not do the battle pass and you don't get to level 100 then you are not going to get all the like all the items that are going to get completely off the like completely off the marketplace and like this is like uh, this is in Fortnite. Imagine if this happens in uh, NFT land <laughs> in Alluvium. Like that's going to be so cool. I really hope that's, that's a question. That's a question we Should. need to not just ask, but, but tell, <laughs> oh, we need to put We need to propose it in governance. That's what we need to do. Unless it's already <laughs> happened. <laughs> it may have. Um, so I guess the only difference is, uh, when you can sell something such as a skin or, the items you unlock and with the battle pass or the imbues. Um, I suppose that the what's changed there is that somebody could purchase um, something that took someone a very long time to acquire, but they can purchase it for the right money. Right. Yes. With this. So then, then it becomes a matter of, I guess it, it doesn't always symbolize that that person that owns that put the time in. No, it doesn't necessarily symbolize it, but like, but I guess not that it matters, but yeah. I mean, I'm just saying like when, when I see someone playing call of duty, who has all these things. I'm like, <laughs> they, they put in a serious amount of time to earn that thing. Yeah. No, and that's true. That's actually a really good point because it, as much as these games do not have any ability, like you can't trade your skins, at least it does give the identity very strongly to the person who's holding it that they accomplish something. That I think needs to be a, a, like addressed in the NFT game space just through a di different way. I think that there are certain things that you can give that are not NFTs, but are uh, but are associated with your wallet. So like imagine if you, cool. if you got a title. Yeah, it's not an NFT. You can't sell the title. Like just just like in the real world, you go get a certificate, you go, you know, go do your degree. You can't go and just go, hey, it's an NFT. <laughs> let's, let's go sell this on the market and give it to someone. <laughs> you can't do that. Um, it's associated with you and your identity. And I guess your identity in crypto space is your address. So, yeah. That, you that, have that, to that, be like a, a wallet, um, almost like an award board. Yeah. Yeah. All of this game stuff has actually made me because there's a in the crypto space there's a lot of um, socialness around your your wallet. But for a while there, I wasn't I wasn't interacting with anything like that, and so I just had so many wallets, just doing all different things. Partly because of safety, because I just I don't want to have all of my everything in one wallet that someone could screw with, like and or I make a mistake and someone gets it. So then I have lots of wallets, but then, but now like people can sort of be judged based on like, there's a thing that's a funny thing out there of like, you get a ranking based on how much gas you've spent and you, and, and so your, your address, like it's a, it's a social, like, um, social title that you get, your address gets and like in in certain platforms that's going to become something that you can use like you can yeah you can be called the gas king or whatever it's called i don't know but applying that concept would be the same thing yes but it makes you have to like respect and hold like one wallet which is 
Oh, 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 I see what you're saying. Yeah, but, sorry, that was yeah. the, what I was leading to. Yeah, so that makes sense. Now I understand what you're saying. Hmm. But who knows? Maybe someone can code that where it's a platform that interacts and you can enter some kind of code that for all your wallets and that code links them to obtain the same title. Who that's knows? A, that's a good idea. You should build it, man. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm on it right now. <laughs> um, but I guess regardless, I would really encourage the Alluvium team to have a battle pass. I think that that will bring so much value to just, yeah, the way that you can they can bring items on into the marketplace and bring rarity and scarcity based, and also bring a addictive element to, or, or just a fulfilling element that that gives people the the desire to keep going and keep playing because you're leveling up not just your alluvial and not just your person, but you're also leveling up this battle pass and you're getting items and getting rewarded just constantly and and that dopamine hit hits you and. Um, and you just want to keep going. <laughs> like, I, I, I really encourage that. If this is not something that is in the works and hasn't been proposed, then we will create an IIP for this. <laughs> yeah, and a series for things that we like to see. Yes, absolutely. Yes, uh, well, that's right. I think we'll do some videos where we do share, like you were suggesting that we, we do videos on sharing what we would like to see. But I guess we got to first find out whether people have proposed it already or if they are already in the works because there's so much and I was chatting to Aaron a little bit in Discord um, Aaron is one of the one of the I, I don't think is he a co-founder I actually don't know if he is a co-founder oh he probably is a co-founder no I think he is for okay. sure um, and Aaron like I asked him whether the the, the this particular IIP for uh, Alluvium Zero the, the building game was was as accurate and up to date uh, 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 so that I could actually read it and get up to date with everything to do with Alluvium Zero. And he was like, not one little bit. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> dang it. So I feel like there's so much of this game and the, and the, like, that has sort of been decided or is like pretty sure thing, but it's all been done and discussed in Discord and it's not on a, a document like this for us just to comment on and read. Uh, so it's definitely evolving. There's no doubt about that. And I think that's why it's kind of hard to put it all on paper right away. Cause I think that a lot of the ideas are developing, um, you know, a lot of community members are probably providing them with a lot of ideas that maybe they didn't think of and they're considering them or, or, you know, applying them. Um, and it's hard to constantly update your, papers so eventually i i would think that eventually they will come out with some kind of a detailed update of everything and then make the necessary changes down the road when they happen yeah but i imagine this will all be after the game is released and the concept is is working i actually feel and i was thinking of this yesterday when i was going for a walk that like in the in the Pokemon realm and Yu-Gi-Oh and anything like this, which has characters and creatures and they all have unique attributes in game or cards or whatnot, they have wikis. And I think that the DAO should own its own wiki that is something that is like the, it's the game book that keeps changing, keeps getting updated from a, 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 a bit more of a centralized place, meaning the, the DAO is an organization, but then it's decentralized based on the fact that the DAO contributes to it, which is a, is a whole bunch of people. Because there, like no doubt, like this was going through my mind of like, there'll be websites out there to, to accommodate the, the Alluvium ecosystem but it's they're going to be their own separate websites and own separate businesses but i think certain things should be because that's what's happening with pokemon there's just separate sites that just have nothing to do with pokemon but they're just a community run and led thing where people just update everything that you could possibly need to know about certain pokemon and i'm telling you there is actually so much to know when you get into the details of how to catch them and and all of that but 
it would be really cool if there was also a a, a DAO run wiki for the game and that it, it probably should get started now like I think that it should get started it would be a lot of work to manage and run but people could have so many questions and, and I just I don't think it should be relied on the actual Alluvium team I think it should be the DAO who are going to be making the changes anyway in the future well even not even in the future right now well I nominate you and you have my vote <laughs> to start that. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Anytime. Uh, uh, well, I, this, this is the game overview. Uh, so thank you guys for, for, for watching. And thank you for those that are also on our podcast. There's been like 50, 50 plays which is just incredible like literally we did this like five days ago so this is just super cool like i'm just so stoked like and 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 just in relation like to that like i had a podcast that we were running for like i don't know seven or eight months and oh no it's probably even a year like time flew it was during covid and i get the beginning of covid and and like it takes so long to build up a user base. It, it just, it really does. And we have eventually had like a consistent, like 60 to hundred people, but it took, took to the end of the, like, you know, it just slowly but surely. Whereas this, it's just like, boom, there's, there's 50 people starting to, to listen to this podcast. So, uh, it's, uh, there's definitely a, a lack of supply, I guess, and to the demand of alluvium. So we're pretty stoked with that. But I did want to say that as much as we're wrapping up with the game of overview, if you guys liked this, if you liked us processing, processing and talking about the, the white paper, there is actually more to the white paper, like the expansion um, that we've got here. We've got the game and backend technology. We've got the DAO and governance. Oh, this is actually a big one. We probably should just do this. Uh, tokenomics, roadmap the team and key partners so if if you would if you would like us to go through these things then please like send a comment contact us go to our discord we would really appreciate just any direction of what you guys want to get from us because we're going to be pumping out videos every day multiple times a day if we can so yeah let us know keep us updated but uh yeah that's us so we'll just say goodbye for now see ya See y'all later.